The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds Coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, it's scary. Hey, hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. You're watching Still Token With. My name's Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard. Wait, did I get an upgrade? Am Not yet. We took it away. Okay, well, <laughs> anyway, we got an awesome show scheduled for you today. And as always, Benjamin, how's it going, my friend? Yo. What's Yo. up? <laughs> What's Yo, up? What's up? Dude, I'm actually super, super psyched about tonight's show for multiple reasons. One, We've actually had the pleasure of, of hanging out with our guest here at a show over the summer in uh, Virginia. Fucking awesome guy, awesome guy. Um, but the other reason is, for the first time, we are actually streaming live on Hellfire Radio and Live 365, folks. So, yes, yes. we're on the radio now. All right. Well, we've been on the radio. We're just doing well, a Well, no, we're live on the radio. So now we when we drop the F-bomb or, you know... Jeff gets ridiculous, it doesn't matter because it's an independent radio station, so we can do whatever the fuck we want. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, speaking of that, Jeffrey, my friend, how's it going? It's going well. How's everybody doing out there? You know what I did today? I whipped you... a bathtub apart. Oh, nice. What the fuck? I'm getting too old to be whipping bathtubs apart. I should be laying in them in hot water. You ripped Listen, Nobody up. wants to know about what you do personally yeah. in the fucking tub, all right, dude? <laughs> wait, wait a second. The bathtub or the bathroom? Well, the bathtub was the only thing left, so it had to go. Okay. <laughs> Sentimental values. He had to wait. <laughs> right? No, I, I, had to, I had to figure out how to cut the pipes. Okay. Jeez, that's not sticky grit on the bottom of the tub. What is it? Um, yeah, was, it, it was, was it a special tub? Like, was it one of, like, the clawfoot tubs? No, it was one of those uh, one right. of those big giant one piece fiberglass fucking units okay. that they used to use in the eighties. <laughs> that was all cracking and falling uh, apart. Okay. Dude, I my brain just went in so many bad directions, bad directions. But hey, anyways, enough about us. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why we're here, Jeffrey. Why are we here? We're here because we have a great guest. Um, I that. promised him I was not going to bring up his shoe size, so I won't. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, we had a lot of fun down at uh, Tidewater Horror Convention hanging out with this dude. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people out there already know who he is. Uh, let's welcome Jason Brooks. Hey, thank you. Wow, that was really. Easy. He just goes, hey. <laughs> well, you got to remember, he's used to being behind that mask, so he doesn't really say much. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> right? So, um, how you doing? Wait a minute. You having a good day? I'm, I'm doing all right. I think I froze for a second there. Yeah, that's all right, because you're over on the West Coast, right? I am, yeah. And it's so, warm out there? Yeah, not too bad. It was pouring rain this morning, but now it's getting kind of nice. So, oh, there you go. Cool, cool. Yeah. I don't know why anybody wants to live out in the West Coast. I just, I don't get it. Oh, yeah, it's pretty. Is it? It's nice. Yeah. Oh, all right. Never been. Actually, I flew over it once, looked down, said, nah. Then how do you know you don't want to live out here? Um, based on the size of the highways. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Jeff has a problem with things bigger than him. <laughs> uh oh, that's why you have a problem with me. No, I don't have a problem. And my you shoe at all. size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was right? actually really funny. Uh, but anyway, um, so tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing. I mean, I know because I took a whole bunch of notes, and you get so much shit going on; it's ridiculous. I do. I didn't take any fucking notes, so this is all going to be new for me. It will, huh? <laughs> awesome. And hey, listen, when we were out at Tidewater and he put us in a headlock, neither one of us could reach his nipple, so it doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> That's actually my um, profile picture. Re oh, reach yeah. Reaching for his nipple? No. I, tr I tried. I couldn't get out of the chokehold. Right. I was, I was afraid for my life. You know, oh, I mean, when, when you walk up to somebody who's sitting at their table... And you strike up a conversation because we were running the panels and stuff. So I had to introduce myself, wanted to introduce myself. And, you know, the first question I asked you was, how tall are you? Because you can't tell when somebody's sitting down. Yeah. You know, uh, and when you stood up and I had to look up, it's like, okay, yep, tall enough. <laughs> you know, that's where the little feet comment came in. So, yeah, that, that happens a lot. It's, uh, it's one of the fun things sitting at the table and people come up and, they get their signature, then they want the picture, and you stand up, and they just keep looking up and looking right. up as you keep going and rising, and it's like, oh, yeah, you are a big son of a bitch. Yeah. And for some reason, um, you actually looked bigger in costume, because we saw you in costume at the event as well. Yeah. Now, do, you, do, you wear, do you wear, like, um, two-inch, three-inch shoes as well? Not at all. Really? Not at all. Yeah, they're just regular... You just appear bigger because you're in costume, probably. I think so. Yeah, I think just my my uh, stature, my or uh, what would they call that? When you uh, anyway, you get a how I stand, <laughs> how I stand is yeah, I get a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, posture, my posture. There we yeah, go. My posture gets okay. better. Yeah, we'll say posture. Yeah. <laughs> my posture gets better and when I'm in the costume and I get into character and just you kind of, stand uh, up, you stand up straighter and a little bit. Exactly. Taller, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Jeffrey, I can what see the hell that kind of questions. Are these? Huh? What the hell <laughs> kind of questions are these Jeffrey? Well, I figured I'd throw <laughs> it right off the, right off the tracks right at the beginning. Oh yeah. Yeah. I uh, will say, I will say one thing about him, about Jason being in costume as Jason down at Tidewater. Um, Impressive, well, the, actually. The, well, very impressive. But the following day, uh, I believe it was actually Sunday morning, I was down at the front desk, and there was a gentleman standing there. And th by the way, this was after we all got to hang out the night before. You know, it was a late night for us all. And uh, I was standing there, and he turned around, and he saw I had on my business shirt, and it said, you know, it had the, the productions and all that. And he said, I think I ran into one of your guys last night. And I said, oh, really? Who? And he said, I was standing in my room and my door was open and i looked over my shoulder and this guy walked by so i put my head out and he turned around and he came back at me he said man <laughs> if we were in detroit i would have shot his ass <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you scared the shit out of somebody at the hotel which was perfect yeah i think i remember that <laughs> well what else do you do yeah. when you're in costume what else well i mean you um, know i mean you scare the shit out of people that's what you do yeah, it's 
So fun part. Yeah, let's let's get right into that right off the get go, and then we can get into more about who Jason Brooks is and what he does. Oh. So you've joined a long line of legends playing Jason Voorhees. Can you tell us a little bit about how that all came to fruition? Yeah. So um, I've liked you know playing Jason for a while. I did it um, just kind of as a cosplay thing on my own um, when I first made my first Jason costume, and then. Uh, I got found by a local haunted house who called me up and said, Hey, can you come down here and volunteer with us? We'd love to have you. Um, there's a Friday the 13th this month. So I did. And uh, it went really well. Um, the crowds loved it. And so they asked to have me back and uh, over and over and over again. And um, from that point on, I just started volunteering for the next few years. And through that time, you know, people who saw me in costume came up and they're like, Oh my God, you look amazing. You should be Jason in a movie, which, you know, of course I would love to do but where's the opportunity and then one day um i heard about it through a through a friend i heard that they were making one out in idaho so i reached out to the director um called him up and um or wrote him said hey i'm interested he said oh thanks but no thanks we've got plenty of people out here in idaho we're casting local like there's like 88 people auditioning so um i threw my costume on had my son film me in the in the costume sent him a video of uh, of me and um, acting as Jason. And then the director wrote me back a couple of days later and said, all right, we're listening. Um, here's some script sides, um, act this out. So I did, sent that back. And then he got back to me and, and said, you know, of all the people that we auditioned, everyone I looked at, you're the first person who um, had the right size, the right build and moved correctly without any direction whatsoever. Um, you just you just nailed it all the way around. So congratulations, you got the part. And wow. so from that point on, I just, busted my ass and, and did, uh, did my part as Jason and everything else I could do to make sure I secured that role and kept it. And, and then, um, met CJ, CJ Graham who played Jason on part six, who got into the film and Steve dash Jason part two. Um, and, uh, became friends with them who opened their arms and, and, uh, let me in to their, their, uh, their life and their world as Jason and taught me quite a bit. So, um, appreciate them for that. Well, uh, that answer is actually, uh, Justin in the chat was saying, uh, any prior Jason's, uh, did you admire, so to speak or, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, oh, yeah, all of them. Um, I admire like every one of them. Um, there's something I've taken. So when I got the part, I spent a good 38 hours or so just watching, um, not just the films, but going and watching behind the scenes, looking at some videos from, uh, different conventions where they've done interviews. Cause I didn't want to just kind of mimic their moves. I wanted to know what was in their head. Like what were they thinking when they did the role? What, um, cause I'm not going to be able to mimic every single thing they did in the movie that I'm in. So, and I wouldn't want to, but I wanted to know their mindset and what they thought of and, and their process so that I could kind of build my own. And, um, and there was things that I admired from each of them. And, uh, and I think that kind of came through in my performance. I constantly hear that, I'm a, this crazy, amazing mixture of all the different Jasons um, and all the different actors who, who portrayed them. So there's something that everyone seems to appreciate. Very cool. Wow. That's, an, that's a hell of a compliment right there. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's impressive. Now, uh, we're, you know, we're talking about uh, obviously vengeance, right? Which is a, uh, they, they're called uh, fan, fan movies. Is that correct? Yeah. Fan film, fan films. Now, can you explain what a fan film actually is? Yeah. Well, uh, but before that, uh, specifically why fan films are so uh, prominent also with Friday the 13th, uh, if you can go into that as well. Absolutely. So um, fan films in general, if it's if you're making a movie that is not funded by the production studio who owns the IP rights, then it is considered a fan film. And um, there are certain rules around that, what you can and can't do. Um, one of the rules is that if the studio is not funding it or producing it, then you need to put fan film in the title to differentiate it from their, their films. Um, also, you're not supposed to, um, you're not allowed to profit off of it, um, distribute it um, for profit, et cetera. So just in general, that's kind of the fan film overview rule. And from there, um, with Friday the 13th, it's had a lawsuit going on for uh, like, was it over a decade now, maybe, or something? I don't know, it's a long time. So no new films have been able to be made by the studios. So that's kind of left a big hole for um, films like Vengeance to come along and and uh, satisfy 
that need to have some more JSON action. So, yeah, there, yeah. there's been uh, quite a bit of uh, you know uh, JSON material. You know, it's uh, we actually covered one on uh, Splash Pages last night. Uh, Jason versus Freddy versus Ash, the comic book. Mm -hmm. um and also you had the video game which was phenomenal but unfortunately that uh got shut down yeah yeah it, it's, it's crazy that you know the the ip for friday the 13th has been you know in limbo for so long absolutely yeah and so and there's a lot there's a ton of fan films out there some really good ones um but and a lot of a lot of other ones but all of them you know made with passion made with love and um and so it's it's fun to watch those and, and enjoy them. Yeah. So uh, I just saw something pop up in the chat, which Leo was going to jump on yep, real yep, quick. Yep. But uh, somebody asked, you know, basically the link. So where, where can people see this this fan film, um, the fan film Vengeance? I'm sorry, I should have reiterated. Yeah. Um, so um, Vengeance, you can watch on YouTube for free. It's uh, F13 Vengeance. If you look it up um, on YouTube. And then you can also find the trailer for part two and the trailers for uh, Roseblood, a Friday the 13th fan film, which is another one I'm in that's coming out here in another month. So Very cool. um, those are all out there right now on, on YouTube. You can check it for free or follow on Facebook, the F13 Vengeance fan page. We're going to have another campaign here to help with the funding of part two um, where you can get the DVD or Blu-ray if you want to, to have that as well. Nice. And, and Lino, uh, they can find out more about that where? Yeah. On the F13 Vengeance fan page on Facebook or Instagram. <laughs> and, uh, you can find that information in your show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. Yep, um, all those links are there. Yeah, they are. They are. I Excellent. Love he, he beat you right to that. You see, first I beat you to it, and then he beat you to it. <laughs> uh, Peter says, Jason is the definitive Jason Voorhees now. Awesome. Oh, nice. Peter. Peter's a writer, director of Roseblood, so... Very um cool, very cool. great guy yeah one of my best friends oh, no if kidding, not no kidding. my um, best friend yeah yeah now is that out or that's coming out you said? that's the one coming out in november um so it's a direct sequel to part seven okay. um and that one uh has lar park lincoln who played tina in part seven she's back reprising her role terry kaiser who plays dr cruz you know weekend of bernie's of uh, bernie mm -hmm. he's uh he's back in it um reprising his role as a doctor kevin spiritus is back uh it's just it's phenomenal wow. Wow. So it's it's so, I'm excited uh, to see it. So I'll throw that out there right now. Peter, um, get our information because we're always booking great guests on this show. And that is a story that I think we could probably put on a show or multiple shows on this network and uh, help you push that around a little more. Yeah. You know. Now, is uh, the Roseblood uh, trailer uh, available? Yes, there's a couple of Rosebread trailers out there on YouTube right now. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to find it. Excellent, and, uh, excellent. Nice, that'd be nice to see. That's yeah, I'm I'm kind of excited about that. I mean, yeah, Friday the Thirteenth has always been one of my go-to's. I mean, gonna be realistic. There were some during the during the stretch that they made that kind of were like, really, you know, but um, I haven't I haven't have the chance to watch vengeance un unfortunately so please don't hurt me next time you see me oh watch it by the next time i see you I'll, I, I will I, promise. <laughs> <laughs> I will i will okay I, I definitely wanted to watch it after we met down in uh virginia and it's just been it's been crazy 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 busy since we got back and oh you yeah know, you know how it goes um i don't think i've watched much of anything on tv oh look at that speaking of virginia Billy Middlestat in the house. Hey, Billy. What's up? Oh, and Peter put the link up for the trailer for YouTube. Yes, he did. Yep. Thank you, nice. Peter. I was going to say, if I know Peter, he's getting that link for you now. Right, right. Awesome. He's uh, a master of marketing. Yeah, I got it downloading. And as, uh, <laughs> as soon as they are downloaded, I'll load them into the system. And, uh, Excellent. Show them. Yeah, yeah, we'll throw a trailer out there. So nice. um, you have four different things in post-production right now. You've been a busy guy. Yes. Uh, what can you tell me anything about um, Zombie Geddon? Yeah, um, that one. That one's a fun movie. Uh, I got asked to be a part of that one a little while ago, but um, to play a serial killer of all things, um, but Imagine not in a, yeah, not in a crazy costume or anything. And then uh, 
at one point they said, oh, hey, we need someone to play the alien as well because there's an alien in this thing. And so I was like, of course, absolutely, I'd love to. And then I got to the point where they're scheduling and said, oh, shoot, you can't be in two places at once if you had to choose between the serial killer or the alien, which I'm like, alien, I'll be the alien, I'll be the monster every time. So uh, yeah, so I'm in, I'm the alien in this one. And it's, it's full of like zombies and aliens and serial killers. And it's a comedy horror. Um, it was just a really good time. Sounds um, fun, actually. So yeah, it's a great time. So that one will be out. Not sure when, but we just wrapped filming on that one a couple of weeks ago. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. And uh, where that the alien suit was designed um, and made by Joe Castro, an amazing effects artist from LA mm-hmm. who's yep. awesome. So yep. Yep. we know the name. Yeah. We know the name. Wow, excellent. Don't know him personally, but we do know the name. And um, what what really intrigued me, and I didn't I didn't realize it, but you were a writer and director for a lot of these things you've done. Oh yeah, I didn't know you were a writer as well. I mean, writer for uh, Vengeance Two, Selfie, Happy Trails, Missing Girl, The Diner. Yep, I, uh, you know, sometimes if you don't have a project. To, to be a part of make one right so right i uh yeah Welcome i always like storytelling <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so um yeah there's a few few things out there that i wrote and, and directed and um and ben just too i don't know if we talked about that uh, when i was there but i'm directing that one as well and was the writer so got passed on down the uh the original director for vengeance jeremy brown um, passed the torch on and said, you know, if there's anyone I trust with it, uh, it's you. So take wow. it. Wow. Yeah. So I was that's kind of quite, quite an honor. honor to, wow. Right? That's impressive. Yeah. That's, that's mo- like multiple honors. Right. Yeah. Right. And then you got some other stuff that's just starting into pre-production too. Yes. Yeah. Um, now are those all, are those all feature films? I'm trying to remember what all's in there. There was, I had so many things. Um, well, there's Beware the Shadow Man. There's Beware the Shadow Man. That's pre-production. Um, there's so many things before COVID. When COVID hit, a lot got put on hold. And, right. And so now I'm trying right. to figure out what's coming back right. or not. There was, there was Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs, that yeah. one. Yeah, I'm that was supposed to start. I'm probably going to pronounce this one wrong. I think it says Me Dicks. No, Medics. 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 <laughs> yep, that one's a... <laughs> yeah. Um, just wishful thinking, right, Jeff? Um, <laughs> Uh, we got, um, no, we have the medics is a, is a comedy. It's kind of like one of those TV series that, um, like I don't don't watch TV very much, but those medical shows and all that, where they have these law and order type things, but it's like that, but it's written by, um, like Don shell is one of the executive producers there and his team. And he's got a history working in the medic field and, um, so it's taking a lot of those stories that are kind of funny of those calls that they get. And he's got this crazy, amazing all-star cast to come back and, and play these things. So, nice. um, but yeah, medics, um, there's giggles, the clown also, which is another one in pre-production. Um, so yeah, I've got a few in there. Yeah. yeah it's- so, uh, <laughs> Billy just stole down. Billy stole my question. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Watch Dogs is it based off the video game? Uh, no, it's there's this award-winning story novel script thing that I guess has won a lot um, that they're adapting into a film. And I, that was one of the first questions I asked: was it is it tied to the game? And they said no. So, sorry, Billy. <laughs> I'm, well, that, I'm that, sorry. I'm that laughing, been at, laughing at Peter's uh, <laughs> comment, you know, <clears throat> where he fell down. Me, dicks. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> uh, was good. Wow. Did you get the trailer there, Leo? I got one of them. Uh, so we have Vengeance 2 loaded right now. Jason, would you like to introduce it? Oh, yeah, sure. So the Vengeance 2 trailer that we have is just a teaser. Um, it was. That was shot just to um, <clears throat> give some concepts of, uh, of the film, but it's actually none of the footage in this one, honestly, is going to be in the film. This is kind of shot pre-production. So it's just a teaser to get some people excited for it. Okay, here we go.
Okay, now I have to watch the first one. Actually, yeah. we were, we, uh, there was a big scene uh, in the trailer. We and I know you said uh, it's not uh, a lot of scenes aren't going to be in a movie, but the um, uh, Jason's home has only been portrayed in the one movie, and uh, they haven't really uh, the altar and everything. They haven't really covered it since. Yeah. It's, uh, I can't say where that is or what it is, but <laughs> well, the 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 original um, shed, I guess it was based off of. Uh, nobody knows what happened to it. Um, we were talking about it last night. They said, I guess that's one of the questions. Uh, Laura Park, Park Lincoln gets asked a lot at cons is uh, where it disappeared to. Oh, yeah, yeah. At least that's what one of the other guys said. Whether it's true that's or not, question. <laughs> Jason, Jason was working at that point. He wasn't listening to you, Leo. I wasn't listening, but yeah, that, that a lot of people. <laughs> I know Peter was going to go and try to go find it at one point um, with some people, but I don't think they ever got there. Right. It's out there somewhere. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Maybe. Or a bunch of kids. The spot is. Down. So you already, already beat be Michael Myers in a promo that didn't take an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Peter says I was going to find it. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. I uh, want to remind every we got a bunch of people watching and uh, you know uh, listening as well. We're streaming live on Hellfire Radio as well. So and live we, three sixty five and live. Well, that's what I meant. It's well, it's both. It's on both, man. We're on two platforms for the radio, folks. Two. It's the same. It's just like twice. Listen, they can listen to it either one, sweetheart. Continue. Children. <laughs> Don't make me put my uh, what, what I was gonna say. Up. What I was gonna say is if there's any questions for anybody watching, please uh you know put them in the comments as you see a bunch of comments coming in, and uh, we'll get to them as best as we can. You already put that one. I, you I, that I, one. <laughs> Part two had the shack, yeah. Yep. Very yes, cool, yes. Cool. Yeah, Steve Dash played our sheriff in part one. Um, Vengeance one, um, and uh, C.J. Graham, Jason Part Six. He was uh, Elias Four. He's my father in Part One, and we had Tom McLaughlin in there as well, uh, who played our gravekeeper, and um, he was the writer director of Part Six. So, oh my God, you guys, <laughs> Darcy wow. DeMoss, right? Wow, I was, I was Darcy DeMoss. <clears throat> I was waiting for you to see it. I wasn't going to bring it up. That? I was going to see how if you were paying attention tonight. <laughs> So she asked um, you a question. Can you, how can you did he like working with me? Oh, I loved working with her. Uh, if you guys don't know Darcy, she's fucking amazing, um, beautiful and sweet. She's she's awesome. And um, yeah, I just I can't. I still pinch myself every day that I got to work with a lot of these people in in Vengeance too, right. like Darcy who played Nikki in Part Six. Um, and uh, just she's so awesome. Right, right. Well, I'll throw that to Darcy, too, just like I did with Peter. You know, we're always looking for amazing guests to come up here, tell their story. And, and for our viewers and our fans and fans of yourselves and now tonight, the radio listeners, um, to find out more about the person, not just the actor or actress or producer, but more about the person. So, you know, we're going to get into more of that with Jason coming up. But, uh, go ahead, Jeff. I know you got something spinning over there. I can see it. No, I don't have to pee. Okay, I was just, I was just checking. Um, Leo, yes, sir. It's uh, it's about that time. So why don't you do that uh, thing that we have to usually do? We we have to do it. Well, we don't have to, but it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do, <laughs> and we uh, always do the wrong thing. I mean, the right thing. You may do the wrong thing, but I do I do the right thing. So just push, just push the right button this time, okay? Uh, I'll try. I'll try. I'll try to maintain my monkey status. Uh, so if you're enjoying tonight's show, there's still plenty of show left. Check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us to find out all about Jason. Uh, and as always, you know, this show and uh, the network and everything, we do have sponsors. Uh, we're going to be playing a uh, sponsor for the Prospect Theater. You know, if you're looking to get back to the theater, Eternals, don't read the spoilers. Uh, you know, that uh, that's coming out soon. Uh, but here we go.
Did you know around 83% of Americans with disabilities are unemployed? We are changing that. The Prospector Theater is a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to providing competitive and integrated employment for adults with disabilities through the operation of a first-run movie theater in Richfield, Connecticut. We greet, seat, and treat our audiences to the best, most accessible movie-going experience in the world. Hollywood blockbusters, delicious gourmet popcorn, and one-of-a-kind pink glove service. Join us for a movie and see our sparkle in action. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit www.prospectortheater.org. And if you want to spice it up a little bit, Ben and Jeff have some hot sauce. Check it out. said you can find all that in the show notes and if you have trouble finding it there's a smart page link you click on that has everything right there uh isn't that right benjamin what's so smart about it it's it smart. has everything right there yeah i don't know they say the phones are smart but the thing auto corrects all the time it's not very smart well for people like you you need auto correct uh peter's asking are you guys in ct i am in ct and i get razzed about it all the time that's right, you do. Oh, hey, we're in Massachusetts, it, actually. <laughs> I we got the Roseblood. The Roseblood premiere is in Connecticut. Oh, nice. Oh, it is. Oh, really? uh, we're about yeah, to we can make it to Connecticut real quick. You might. You guys <laughs> might need to come and do a show or a live broadcast or something. That'd be a ball. Yeah. When is it? Uh, it's November 29th, I believe. Um, Peter's probably going to come and tell us. Uh, Peter says Wallingford. He lives in Wallingford. Okay. Don't know where that is, but I'm sure it's not hard to find. Do we have a... November 28th. November 28th? November 28th. Yeah. Uh, Wallingford is uh, near Cheshire, um, right above Branford, near New Haven. Guys, um, Can you speak English, Leo? Because I have no... Fucking clue where any of that is. This near New Haven. Okay, thank you. Right. And uh, he put an event right there. There's Eventbrite. Yeah, and it's going to have uh, celebrities there doing signings. It's like a little mini convention. It's going to be pretty, pretty. Really? Weird. really? Yeah, we'd love yeah. to be there. Leo, so, uh, Leo, you are you comfortable going out of the house yet? Not yet. Oh, you're killing me. I'll, I'll run it from here. You guys go and bring yeah. your life. All right. And All right. So a, we can, put you I in do... a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, I had a little little heart scare if, this year. So um, I'm, if, uh, if, yeah. if Peter would like us to come out and broadcast live from the event, we'd um, we'd be more than happy to go on down. I believe, Jeff. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I'm game. With awesome. this, we have nothing scheduled for that day. I know um, that. I'm going in right now. Do you have a? Uh, did you guys get the link for the trailer for Roseblood? Uh, it is. Uh, looks like it finished downloading so yeah let me uh nice then you can see what you what you'd be going to check out yeah okay it'll just take me a second to load it in so uh one of you guys keep the conversation going so besides being being an actor an accomplished actor uh tell us a little bit about more a little yeah okay jeff take over because i just fucked that all <laughs> well up. yeah i wanted actually i had a question I, uh because um you cosplayed an, another well-known character as well, right? A couple, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you used to uh, perform at um, events with uh, for Lucas Films. Is that correct? Correct. Right. And who did you play? Uh, that would be Darth Vader. Well, who else, right? Right. Who else? Yeah, the big guy. Yeah, I used to do that um, a long time ago. I do a lot of charity events with a group called the Five Hundred First Legion, and um, they did a lot of children's hospital visits, um, raising money for charities uh, millions a year. They'd raise, and 
And then um, Lucasfilm ended up kind of bringing him into the family. And then when Disney took over, you, uh, they had the program where you could audition, become part of the Lucasfilm family, go out and they had hired you to do different events, shows and all that. So I performed for, uh, for several things, did several uh, onstage band introductions for, for different um, well-known bands and uh, performed with Weird Al Yankovic about four times on stage there with him for his songs and all well, that. that must and have been fun. That's a great time. Yeah. So, and, good uh, stuff. Is it true? I, I heard the five oh uh, five oh first. Uh, one of their rules: your your suit needs to be um, screen ready, where you can like screen yeah. accurate. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's really yeah. Cool. Very. Um, they want to keep the whole uh, you know the whole myth alive, and you know they want to have very screen accurate costumes. You can't really get them in the stores, um, and you, there's all these approvals that you have to go through to make sure that. Um, that it's very exact, like the like the uh, films. So, wow, that's that's really cool. Yeah, that's uh, impressive. Uh, which yeah. mask? Which mask do you like wearing better? Which one's more comfortable, or or do you have uh, a favorite? That really depends. Um, I mean, the the Vader costume, once it's all on with all the fiberglass and leather and everything it's probably about 40 pounds 40 50 pounds um the jason one's a little lighter they're both multi-layered hot uh the mask though there's a little more breathing room in the vader mask um so but it's more uncomfortable i don't know it's, okay <laughs> it's really hard yeah, to I, just, I was just curious yeah, I don't, yeah. I see, you see i don't know if anybody else caught that but when you said multi layers of fiberglass and leather jeff's eyes kind of went ooh. I no, I'm, I'm into latex, oh. not leather. <laughs> oh, latex. That's right, latex. <laughs> uh, latex, leather, it's all the same. That goes back to another guest we had that we were fucking with. Yeah. We had uh, uh, voice actor Larry Kenny, who did uh, Sonny the Cocoa Bird, Count Chocula, uh, but Lion-O on Thundercats. <laughs> oh, nice. And Jeff somehow got him in latex. I mean... Yeah, latex in in a hotel. Uh, yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty fucked up. So you got to watch that guy up in the corner. I'm just telling you. All right, keep my eye on him. Well, on another <laughs> note, uh, the Roseblood trailer uh, has successfully loaded. And Jason, would you like to introduce it? Yeah. So um, for those who just joined, this is uh, the Friday the Thirteenth Roseblood trailer, um, written directed by Peter Anthony, starring. Um, uh, Laura Park Lincoln coming back as Tina, uh, Terry Kaiser's Dr. Cruz, Kevin Spiritus back as Nick, um, Snia Lutzis, myself as Jason, and many other talented people. <laughs> Hit it. <laughs> exist because of you. It doesn't fit, does it, Tina? Huh. Well, one word that comes to mind that does. Um, how about manifest? <laughs> as, as the trouble, Tina, as you manifested a, a demon right before our eyes, I bet that will work fine. Her name is Rose. She's the new blood around here. We think her control over gravity is ten times that of Shepard. <laughs> it's showtime, Red. The general found her. She's like you in some ways, but she is something that you and I have never seen before. Our goal is to subdue your masked friend, <laughs> if he truly exists. Where's your monster now? You fixed it? How? Why? You have no idea what you're dealing with. How many times have I told you? Call me Duke. The girls, they need you, especially Tina. The girls are on their own. I don't play God here, Julian. Neither do you. Complete the session, Tina. I hate you! Tina. I just wish you would go away! Tina. Tina. Talk to me. 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 Talk to me.
to me. Uh, Justin is wow. asking, uh, how tall are you? I am 6'5". That's insane. Wow. With little feet. With little size 13s. Or right. Feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roseblood looks awesome. Uh, as yeah, all this information is in the show notes up above or down below, depending right. on where you're watching or listening to us. Cool. Yeah, there's a, uh, another one, another trailer on there for Roseblood that's a little more action-packed if you like that. That was the, the story driven one. Um, so pick your poison and go check it out. And you can see those on YouTube. Yep. And you can find all the information in the show notes up above, down below. Depending on where you're watching or listening to us. Right. Yeah. I just figured I'd give you a little ass assistance on that. Oh, m much appreciated because I'm uh, I was tied up uh, that call that tried coming in. That was uh, that was our friend Steve, and then he was messaging me. Steve. Oh, from the network. Yeah. No. No. Uh, Joiner. Oh, Joiner. Yeah. No. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I'll send him a message. Hey, what the hell do you think? You're not Bill Diamond. You can't call during the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Bill's learned not to do that, at least temporarily. You should just send him All a right. link, though. So anyway, can, like, pop in every now and then. Hey, we have a guest. No, we have a guest over there. <laughs> so, um, when I was trying to do some research on you, I um, I came across another Jason Brooks. Oh yeah. Do you get confused very often? What's yes and no. Um, many many years ago, before all the acting stuff, I used to get his fan mail. Um, on occasion, and That's uh, funny. yeah, it was it was really odd. I was I was working at Amazon at the time, and I don't know how my email got out there, but um, all of a sudden in my work email, I started getting people saying, "Oh my God, you know, you're the best ever. You're such a handsome actor. I love watching you." And I was like, "What the hell is this?" And because <laughs> I wasn't in anything at the time, and and it just kept coming. And finally, somebody said something about Baywatch, and uh, I was like. What? So I looked him up on IMDb, and sure enough, there's a, a Jason Brooks that was on Baywatch and several other things, and um, I was like, it made a lot of sense after that. Right. Right. He's using his middle and name then, now, uh, though, so to, to help stop the confusion, Jason Maxwell Brooks. Yes. Oh, good, good. So he changed, so I wouldn't have to. That's, that's nice. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, I haven't had the I haven't had the confusion since. So. Awesome. So Peter asked a question a few minutes ago. I know that it scrolled by. He said, uh, ask Jason about his Warriors cosplay. Oh, yeah, the Warriors. Um, so I love that movie. I don't know if you Yeah. Watch. I'm assuming oh, you yeah. guys know about it. Oh, but yeah. Many years ago, um, and I didn't know about it when I was younger. I got introduced to it much later in life, but fell in love with it right away and ended up going and finding a, a movie-accurate leather warrior's vest so and then when i would go to cons <clears throat> like conventions just as a a guest not as a or as a patron not as a special right, guest right, right right um that's that's what i would wear i just wear the warrior's vest and some jeans and whatever and and uh, just go around so and it was kind of fun because you'd see who the fans were who knew it because you know in the background somewhere you'd hear warriors come out to play oh yeah so <laughs> he had um, the full mall too. <laughs> yeah. So it was uh it was great. It was Oh, I wish we had a picture of that. Oh, I didn't have the mullet perm. I used to have long hair, like long curly hair. It was uh, I looked everyone thought it was Chris Cornell at the time. But uh yeah, it's on my Facebook. I'm sure you could dig it up. But it's uh, digging up the dirt. Oh, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> One of my old profile pictures on Facebook if you're if anyone wants to go find it. But yeah, that was uh, that was great. Oh, 
<laughs> anytime, he tur- anytime he turns his head away from the camera, he's working on something that we just said. <laughs> so it'll be here soon, I'm sure. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, your actor page or your personal page? Uh, it's my personal. Mm. <laughs> he's going to hunt that sucker down. So um, tell us a little bit more about things outside of the film industry that you'd like to do. Um, let's see. I like to, I don't even know anymore. I've been doing the film thing so much and it's taken up so much time, but, um, it's always, it's like working and then going home, working on film or hanging out. So, um, yeah, just kind of go with the flow. That was easy and simple. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, my, I think question. I need to get a new hobby. <laughs> You know, uh, no, uh, no, like, you know, sports. Did you uh, grow up playing sports and stuff like that? I mean, you must have been six foot five. You were obviously tall as a kid. Yeah, I didn't. I played football a little bit when I was young, um, but I was just not coordinated enough to, to do it. I wasn't interested in being young. I was more of an artist. Okay. So I did a lot of uh, drawing and, and art, artistic Drama things. Drama class. Yeah, but my... Um, my family, they were all into uh, sports. And so I was kind of the odd man out in that, focusing on the art. <laughs> now, um, were you tall compared to all the other kids in your class, too? Yeah. Or did you sprout, like, afterwards? No, I, I was pretty tall, um, always. At least a few inches taller than most kids growing up. And then um, in my early teens, kind of sprouted up even more, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, because I know that it, that comes different, you know, depending on, uh, you know, uh, how you grow. Some some kids grow really fast for a year or two. Yeah. No, I was always tall and lanky and skinny. Like really? a Nicobod crane. Oh, there you go. What? Wow. A what? <laughs> an Ichabod crane? Yeah. Oh, there you go. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> For the people that are listening to us on the radio or the podcast later on, you're going to have to go back to our website, stilltoking.com, and rewatch this just to see that picture. Or like Billy said, Jason just got 50 new friend requests. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. from women. Well, mostly. Mostly. And Jeff. Uh, and Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on now. Make fun of me like that. The, K- the Kmart Kevin Nash. <laughs> Kmart Kevin Nash. There you go. That's oh, hilarious. That was, that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, uh, did a couple more questions just popped in. I know Leo was. Oh, all right, you're back. Yep. Did you get nervous being a goat? What? Uh, it probably means greatest of all time. Yes. The goat. Oh, like, okay. Thank goat. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just like I didn't see that. <laughs> um. So he actually followed that up with another question, and he said, "You are playing a goat, a legend. Did that make it more difficult?" Oh, for sure. Re- referring to yeah, yeah. So, I mean, absolutely. It's like, you know, I got it, and I was excited, and and then I remember getting on set and thinking, "Oh shit, this is a lot of responsibility. Don't, don't fuck, fuck this, this up. up, right?" Yeah, I mean, there's one one actor on that entire film that can screw up the entire film, like. And that's me being Jason. If if people don't like the Jason in the film, they don't like the film. Like they're not going to say, "Oh, that movie, that one actor was great, but Jason sucks." So it's still a good movie. It's I could ruin the whole thing, and uh, anyone else can suck and be fine because it's like, "Oh, everyone else did good," or but so it was a little bloody. And then also had the realization that I'll be compared to every other legend who's played Jason too. So um, you know, there's. Uh, a lot of fans out there for um, for Jason and they're in the different actors like Kane Hodder's massive following and people yep. like love Kane and it's like there's no one else in the world except Kane. And so it's like if you're not Kane, then you suck. Um, but I've done pretty well with that demographic also where mm-hmm. um, people people have appreciated my performance. Um, so I hear you're my favorite next to Kane or um, and some people I'm their favorite, which is just still blows me away. But it's it's a lot of responsibility, and I take it seriously too. So, 
Well, that's funny. I mean, you know, if you get a bad actor during the day, you can always just kill them off because that's what you do. Yeah. But you can't be killed off. So no. they can't get rid of you if you're a bad actor. Well, I mean, they could get rid of me as the actor. Yeah, they, they, someone can't, else they, the can't get rid of, they can't get rid of Jason. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't work yeah. that way. But Jason, another actor that sucks, you just kill the character off. Yeah, Jason right. doesn't walk through the woods and trip over air. It's always the blonde being chased by Jason that trips over air. It's true, which is really odd because I can't see shit in that costume. <laughs> so I should be tripping all the time. Well, that's why he walks everywhere. Yeah, You've got to step no very carefully because you can't see what the hell you're going. Well, if you play the game, you figure out, you know, how he moves. Um, you know, when he's like close to a kill, he, he he's like um, solid. He, he's walking. But other than that, if he's like traveling, he's like uh, like a spirit form. Like he he uh, he zooms from spot to spot. Teleports. Yeah. Yeah. You Did you play the game? I did. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, Bugsy? Uh, no, no, I, 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 I was never good at it. So. Oh yeah. Bugsy, <laughs> Bugsy is one of the characters. Um, Bugsy is one of the characters in the game, one of the counselors and uh, he's in vengeance actually. Oh, nice. The one that they modeled him after. So those who like the game can, can check that out. Yeah. I, I, I like the game. It was just, uh, yeah, I, I, I sucked at it. Right. Right. So yeah, I did too. Everybody <laughs> wanted me to play it and, and I, I did okay as a counselor, but I sucked as playing Jason on the game. You kept tripping over air. I did. <laughs> kept running into walls. I couldn't turn around. Just, I don't know. Dropping I'm the video machete. games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin says, uh, so uh, interacting with other cast me members uh, has to be a funny story that nobody asks you about. Oh, man. Let's see. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a few. Um, I mean, Steve Dash was great to work with had some funny stories, but that's come up a few times. There's uh CJ Graham um, on the end scene of vengeance, which I won't spoil, but you know, he's a prankster part two. I don't know. They're just some pretty amazing people. And I don't know about funny stories, but uh, yeah, got a lot of great stories, great memories and stories you shouldn't tell. Some stories I shouldn't tell, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in vengeance stays in vengeance. Yeah. Unless it's caught by the camera. Right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it's either a highlight reel, a blooper, or blackmail. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So um, do you have, it's only blackmail um, until we put it in the behind the scenes. Right. What do you What do you have coming up for appearances next, where uh, people can actually go and meet you, maybe get get an autograph or something like that? Um, I think the only one I have right now is uh, the Roseblood premiere in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. And the links so I think are, that's the links yeah. are in the notes, folks. But go ahead. So I think that's the only one I have right now. Bye, Jeff. Um, but I've I've heard a couple. I've gotten contacted from a couple places that want to have me out there. So I sent them to my agent, and we'll see if they uh, how that goes. Right, right. So, as as most of you viewing noticed, you know Jeff just disappeared. Um, it's been happening to him over the past few weeks. And I had to fart back like that. You know, <laughs> you still can't figure out why that's timing out on you and kicking you out, huh? No, it's weird. I blame my wife. I would too. So, uh, Bill, uh, was it Billy? Uh, no, Peter sent uh, another trailer. Uh, since oh, did you get we, it? Uh, well, since it takes a while to load, I'm just going to do a share screen. Oh, there uh, we go. Okay. Yeah. So oh, okay. So this, is, so this is the other trailer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this is my favorite one. Yeah. So well, you uh, should have said that. We want to play this one first. I didn't know which one he had. Neither did I. Uh, keep in mind, while I play this, uh, people can still hear us. Uh, so, uh, so. Oh, 
Come on! You need to calm down. Get away from it! The flock of seagulls, really? Did that, that leg cool free too? <laughs> that was cool as shit. Yeah, that I just, was cool I, as shit. I just want to know what I have to do or who I have to call to get a, a, a quick cameo of Jason throwing me through a fucking wall because I just think that – I mean, the locker was cool, but I think with the, the size and power, you could actually probably put somebody so, as small as me through a wall. Uh, don't watch my movie the next time I see you, and uh, we'll see if we can make it happen. Nice. I'll give you 10 bucks. I'll give you nice. 10 bucks throwing through, that, throwing through that brick wall you got right behind you. No fake shit. There we go. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and you'll have to find a new co-host, and it wouldn't work. I got Leo. Like I said, it wouldn't work. <laughs> well, fuck you, too. <laughs> yes. uh, okay, so so I try to save this towards uh, towards the end, because I know you guys don't like it. But just to, you know, I like to dork out about stuff. And, dork and away, Leo. Yeah, dork away. You know, before, uh, before we hopped on live, you, you mentioned uh, your day job. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's, uh, to me, totally sounds very interesting. But would you like to describe uh, what you do? Yeah, I, I'm the VP of e-commerce and creative at a cosmetics company, Tory Bell Cosmetics. Um, and I run the e-commerce team, uh, merchandising, marketing, and uh, the yeah, creative video department, photo department. So, Very cool. Pretty uh, awesome. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's women's cosmetics? Yes. Okay. Unless, you know, if you're looking for some cosmetics, we can send some to you too. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing testing for the Harvest Cup right now. I'm a judge for the competition. And yeah, I got to do uh, some like CBD topicals and there's like rose lotions and all this stuff that I have to try. So if I look shiny, that's why. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you say to that? <laughs> right? You, you, there's nothing you can say. That's why I just shook my head. I was so, like, ugh. Uh, what, what's the site and uh, what's the e-commerce platform? Uh, it's ToriBellCosmetics.com. T-O-R-I-B-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Shameless, Shameless, Shameless plug. plug. Shameless yes. plug. Shameless plug. That's actually, all right. Yeah, they actually um, helped quite a bit with Vengeance 2 and donated um, uh, donated the makeup and uh, provided the makeup for the film. So that was... Oh, cool. There you go. That was pretty, pretty that's, awesome. That's really cool. Well, then absolutely shameless plug all the way. Yeah. And you know what? And it's funny. I was just talking the other day, the uh, people, the unsung heroes in a lot of, um, a lot of films, mm -hmm. the makeup artists, special mm -hmm. effects people, you know, like you noticed uh, watching some films, um, they're introducing all kinds of people and uh, the makeup artists who make us all look good and amazing, never get the credit. So shout out to uh, Naomi and Michelle and Justin and, and L for, for Venice too, who killed it. Very cool. You you had you had that many makeup artists. How come we only get one? Because that's all we need. That's oh, all we need. True. That's true. But she does kill it. And you you're right. The makeup artists, uh, the they, behind the scenes people, they do, and you know. you know all the behind the scenes people. They do great jobs. Great jobs making everything come together. You know. Absolutely. So, uh, Peter says uh, Lisa Perez is in the house. And hey, she, Lisa. She says hi, big guy. Hey, what's up? And uh, so uh, what's the e-commerce platform you guys are running on? The e-commerce platform we're running on is Shopify right now. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Leo, Leo likes to dork out, so we yep. just let him. Well, <laughs> we let him. Like, like I mentioned, I did e-commerce in, uh, in another life, and uh, my favorite was uh, um, Drupal. Um, their e-commerce platform was pretty good. Hey, show him your little Jason. Oh. Do I want to see this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Love that. We actually got that uh, at Tidewater. 
Yeah, I yeah, saw we those got that at yeah, yeah, we got it at Virginia. Yeah, I thought about. Yeah, and then we had uh, uh, Jay Moore's did a uh, drawing that we got him too, or an art print. Oh, yeah. the Jason art print. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't know what Sweet. you like more, Jason or Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. Maybe. Baby yeah. Yoda. Yeah, yeah, he's a bit. Yep, he's a Baby Yoda guy. <laughs> yeah. Look at the smile. I mean, how could you not? You know, nothing. Nothing. Is he's at got least the walk now, behind at it. least now we're sending you the, the the baby Yodas, and your wife won't kill you for ordering them. Yeah, but she 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 also gets creeped out because it's all little eyes staring at her. She, <laughs> she says that when she comes into my room, there's all these little eyes staring at me. I don't like it. Uh, just that's why thing. nobody comes into my panther room. <laughs> your panther room. Yeah, I have a room full of panthers. Black cats, posters, statues from all over He's the world. He's actually sitting in there right now. I'm sitting in there right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's yeah, just... they're everywhere. And people, I've had people in here that say they just cannot sit here because it's all eyes looking at you. Black demon eyes. Right. right. It reminds me of uh, the 80s. Like, I don't know, there's a big panther face a while back. Oh, yeah. I got all kinds of retro stuff. From like the sixties too. I think in the sixties too. Barbecue, baby Yoda. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jason eats Yoda. That's great. <laughs> Barbecue Yoda. They should make a little baby Yoda on one of those spits. Yeah, there you go, Leo. Yeah. Wrapped in bacon. Wrapped in go. bacon. <laughs> the bacon baby. Yoda. All right, listen. Hey, this has nothing to do with our guest, and we're we're getting close to time. It is. No, but I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, kind of actually. No, we're having fun. Yeah, we. So, you know, um, yeah, we're uh, we're definitely gonna um, figure out and and work out a way where we can come out to Connecticut for the uh, uh, the screening. That'd be awesome. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that would be a total yeah. ball. Uh, yeah, which means Peter ben, on that. And, yeah, which yeah, means Ben has he... to watch Vengeance first. Oh, I'm going yep. to watch it. Oh, I trust me, it's on my list to do. It just has not got to done. But it will have to. Right. The way. You're going to want to watch it because, you know, part two is going to come out and then you'll be lost. I'm He's lost, lost anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all so, good. Uh, excellent. Hey, hey, check this out. I want to share a story real quick. So yesterday, um, so Richie Ramone from the Ramones. Yep. He's, he's in Vengeance 2. Oh, okay. Um, and oh, he's okay. one of the, so he, uh, so Tamara Glenn who played um, in part five, Halloween part five. She's, um, I met her, she's also in Vengeance too. Um, and then her, she's best friends with the Richard Ramon and telling him about the project. And he reaches out and says, I want to be a part of this. So how, how do we say no to Richie Ramon? Right, um, right. So anyway, he's in there too. And we also and coincidentally had a spot that was perfect for him. But um, he came out, did his thing. He was fucking amazing. I mean, he was just the sweetest guy, um, really wonderful. And um, as we're filming, he's like, hey, you know, I, I'm writing some new songs. Can I write a song for the film maybe? Or yes. Yes. Like, I mean, the answer is 100% of the time, yes. Right, right. Um, So I just, yesterday, I'm just living my life at work, and I get a text message from Richie. And uh, I mean, that's first of all, it's like, oh, my God, Richie Ramon's texting me. And I read it, and he's like, hey, man, I've got a couple songs here we just recorded in the studio. You know, we're going to go record them next month. But what do you think about this? You know, we can put this in there. And then sends me another text. Or how about this one? And sends me a couple songs that are unreleased that he's just writing in the studio, just recording there, that they haven't actually recorded or released yet. And and I'm listening to these songs, and they're they're awesome. And uh, and just kind of have to sit back and think, this is this is my life right now. Right. <laughs> Richard right. Ramon sending me his sample songs and asking awesome. my opinions on them and what do I think and um it was super cool yeah that 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 is definitely really yeah cool. that is um, definitely awesome we actually we actually Jeff and I actually worked with a, a gentleman out in Kansas City named Robbie Lopez mm -hmm. and um Richie Ramon actually was in one of Robbie's films that he produced which was Head Cheese um not too long ago so it was, it was, uh, and Mark Dodson was involved yeah Mark in that Dodson too. was also in that who yep. uh, does a lot of voices. Uh, Mark Dodson's known for um, Salacious Crumb, but mm -hmm. mostly famous for the voices of a lot of the gremlins. You know, um, 
and he's got a niche. Wanna, yeah, and it, well, if you want to go way back, Mark Dodson actually supplied Romero with all the zombie voiceover oh, sounds nice. right. for Romero's movies. Right, which, which we got to use in ours. Which we now have for ours. So, yeah, we, we definitely feel that. I mean, it's, it's so exciting when somebody – when that becomes your world. Right. You know, and it, it is. It's so cool. We can sit here and trade stories all day, I'm sure, about how that world, you know what I mean? It's just, it's so fun. It so, is. And, but. and I mean, I not I don't leave anyone out. We have uh, also in Vengeance 2, Rob Mello, who played the Babyface Killer, Happy Death Day. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Taylor plays Pinhead in Hellraiser Judgment. Yep, yep, Paul. Oh, no yep. shit. He's who, in that too. Nice. He's in that too. Um, yeah, he was sitting next to me in Virginia. Yeah, he, he was. Posters on his table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Great yeah, Tom, Tom McLaughlin's back, um, CJ Graham, and uh, <laughs> very cool. Yeah, a few other, a few other surprises. So that's very cool. Very cool. I'm excited to see that. But yeah. I got to watch the other one first. So oh, for sure. Yeah. But no, we had a we had an amazing cast, an amazing crew, and uh, I'm just grateful and blessed for everyone who put their time and effort into it. So. Now, how come we didn't learn about uh, Paul being in Vengeance 2 when we were at Tidewater? Uh, I mean, I we know, talked to both attention. you guys. You were, you were right next to each other. Yeah, he had the posters on his table. I was, was just going to say, he, he didn't look at the posters on the table. No, yeah. I was looking at the pictures of Pinhead. No. Okay, fair, fair game. Yeah, fair, fair. You know. You know <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I have tunnel vision. Tunnel vision. Blinders. Sometimes you can't see over the table. It's okay. Right. Well, My feet were in the way. over it when you're under it. <laughs> My feet were in the way. <laughs> My feet were in the way. <laughs> nice. Uh, so, all right. Um, yeah, I'm getting hungry. It's almost my dinner time. Yeah, I was um, going to say, we're getting close to that time because Leo's got, Leo produces another show tonight. Um, any Anything that you want to add, Jason, before I send Leo to do his thing that we do? Um, no, I don't Shameless think so. Plugs, you know, um, you know, just go follow us on F13 Vengeance fan page on Facebook, Instagram, follow the uh, Roseblood F13 fan film um, on all the social media platforms. Uh, check us out, follow us, talk to us there. And um, yeah, find us on YouTube. Go check out the trailers and check out the film. Yeah. And uh, all that can be found in the show notes up above or down below. Depending on where you're watching, you listen to us. Uh, so uh, for me, just Google Leo Pond. You'll find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which. Uh, but more importantly, I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. About 40 shows on the network. A lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, Jason, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Um, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are my biggest platforms where I, I tend to respond. Very cool. You're a TikToker? I didn't mean to be. I didn't mean to be. <laughs> it just kind of happened, right? It did. There was a uh, um, an old girlfriend who got me onto TikTok and said, "You got to try this thing out." I'm like, "What? What the hell is this?" And I downloaded it, and I ended up just kind of watching, um, just to watch stuff, and uh, so I could keep up with what she was talking about. And and eventually, um, I posted a couple things, and someone on there recognized me, saw who I was, and and duetted it, put it out there. And all of a sudden, it just overnight blew up and got half a million followers. From, wow, nice. Wow. Yeah, from people wow. like jumping on there and seeing it. So I just I just kind of get on there and I answer questions. People ask me about the films, ask me about stuff in general, and I, most of my stuff is just responding to them. So Very, Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Very cool. To me, TikTok is a sound a clock makes. So, you know. Um, or you're nuts against your knees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes, you know, just starting to go lower. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, stilltoken.com, that's who you want to find us. Uh, you know, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Uh, we're, I don't think we're on TikTok. Are we on TikTok, Ben? Yep. We are? Yep. Really? Yep. Uh, oh, okay, are you, <laughs> did you create an account or have you posted anything? Both. Okay. Okay. So there's not a lot of content on TikTok. It's not one of the platforms that I really uh, push towards only because we have so many going on with, you know, the networks being, you know, the Dorkening Podcast Network, Hellfire Entertainment Media, Hellfire TV, now Hellfire Radio, um, 
you know, the website. Look at that. I'm fading into my backdrop. That's fucking cool as shit. Oh, who, who just posted Snapagram? What the hell is Snapagram? It sounds like a dating service for old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff will be checking out Snapagram later, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, farmers only. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, is it my turn? Was Jeff done? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm all done. You don't want to look me. Yeah, yeah, you can find me on Facebook if you can find me. Mm. Good luck with that. I am there. Yeah, just Seriously. look for a picture of Jason choking him out. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, because that's my profile picture. Me and Ben being choked out by Jason Brooks. I love it. Right. And uh, right. do you got that on your OnlyFans? My OnlyFans. Yeah. What the hell is OnlyFans? It's on his. It's on his Patreon, and it's a special. You have to subscribe. <laughs> Uh, uh, so uh, I do. I want to do one more shout out. Um, By all who, means. Um, so Sean Lutzis and Lutzis family. Um, without them, none of these films would be possible. Uh, they they are amazing. They're the silent background backbone of this whole thing. So um, their generosity has um, provided us the ability and the platform to be able to do all this. And so we could get out in their in their yard and their property and and play and make films so that's awesome yeah cool. excellent. Oh, always appreciative to them so, excellent uh, before i take us out completely jason when leo cues out the uh, closing music just hang tight um till it closes out and we can chat real quick backstage if you don't mind okay um so thank i first i want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight we had a ton of people watching I know there's a ton of people listening to us now live on Hellfire Radio and Live 365. Make sure you check us out there. Um, all social media platforms. If you can think of social media platforms, you'll find us there. Uh, Even speak. TikTok, apparently. Well, we have a fucking MySpace, so why not well, TikTok? Well, yeah, we do. Yeah. Right? Might as well. But to, uh, to all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do every day. So people like all of us can come up here and do what we do every day. We'll see you next week. We're out of here. Stay safe. Peace out.